Hello everyone. This video will cover basic keyboard controls which will enable you to move around and interact with your Minecraft world. If you have little or no experience with keyboard gaming, you may want to follow along in your own world to get some practice. You will quickly notice, first, if you move around your mouse, that's how you can actually look around. Then if you want to actually move your character, you have to use the W, A, S, and D keys. You should rest your left hand here, using your ring, middle, and index fingers. They function as pseudo arrow keys, W moving you forward, A moving you left, S moving you backwards, and D moving you right. Practice walking around in the game, guiding yourself with the mouse and walking with the W, A, S, and D keys. The next movement key is the spacebar, to jump. You can rest your left thumb here. Your character can jump about one meter in the air, allowing you to move up one layer of the terrain. Practice by moving up some hillsides by pushing forwards with the W key and pressing the spacebar to jump. You can also use the spacebar to swim in water. Holding the spacebar will keep you swimming or keep you jumping. There is no need to mash the key. Now, rest your pinky on the left shift key. Holding this key will make your character crouch. Unlike most games, this doesn't make you shorter, so it won't get you under obstacles. Instead, it makes you move slower, and makes your nameplate harder to see for other players, and most importantly, it prevents you from falling off of blocks. Hold shift while approaching a ledge, trying to walk off. It won't let you, which will come in handy when you are high up. Shift also has some special uses while navigating your inventory and placing blocks, which will be covered later. You can sprint rather than walk by pressing the left control key or by double tapping the W key. You can move around faster and jump farther while sprinting. We've now covered all of the basic movement keys. As you play, this configuration will begin to feel natural. But if you're new to keyboard gaming, you will want to practice running around in your world for a little while. If you need to pause or change any of the menu options, you can press escape. At this point, I recommend opening the menu and changing the difficulty to Peaceful. Press Escape, go to Options, and toggle the difficulty until you see Peaceful. This will turn off hostile enemies and allow you to ignore hunger and other things that would make learning the game pretty difficult. Now let's take a quick look at the mouse. If you're using a touchpad, there should be equivalent controls, but you'll find it very difficult to play, so I recommend investing in a mouse. Left click will attack with whatever is in your main hand, or destroy blocks using whatever is in your main hand. Go ahead and punch some dirt or trees. Note that you can just hold down left click, constantly pressing it won't do much. Right click will use the item in your hand, or place a block that is in your hands. After digging some dirt or harvesting trees, you can place them in the world again with right click. Go ahead and break some of the blocks in your world with left click, and place them back down with right click. Now let's talk about inventory. Pressing the E key will open up your inventory. This is where you keep items on your character. Simply being near an item that's dropped on the floor, such as this flower, will put it in your inventory. Your inventory has a couple special places. Up here in the top left you see uh, armor slots such as for your helmet, a chest plate, leggings, and boots. Uh, to the bottom right of your character you see a shield slot, which is basically anything that goes in your offhand. Then at the top right there's a 2x2 two two crafting grid, which we'll have to talk about in the game mechanics video. Then you have three rows of backpack slots. Uh, these are just for storage, you can't really do much with these. But then you have your hotbar at the bottom, which you could see even when you're outside of your inventory. Only one type of item can exist in any one slot in your inventory, but many of that item can be stored there as a stack. The number in that stack is displayed in the bottom right of that item, so you could see 64 dirt in this one stack, 32 dirt in this stack, and there's only one dandelion, so it's not going to give me a number here. Uh, different items have different stack sizes, but most of them stack up to 64 or not at all. You can pick up items with your cursor by left-clicking, you can pick up half of the stack with a right click, and you can place down the entire stack with left click, or you can place down only one item with right click. 
When holding items in your cursor, you can distribute the stack evenly by holding, left-click, and dragging them around, or you could hold right-click and distribute just one in each slot. Double left-clicking will try to fill the selected stack if there is more of that item distributed through the inventory, so I could easily pick up all this dirt and put it back together again. Shift-clicking, or pressing shift on the keyboard and clicking, will move the entire stack between inventories very quickly. In this case, it will move between the three rows of the backpack slots and the hotbar, which is the fourth row. And now we should talk a little bit more about this hotbar down at the bottom. Your hotbar is a quick access inventory. You can think of it like your pockets or a utility belt. By having things here in your hotbar, you can actually place them in the world or use them if they're a tool. You'll notice on your hotbar that one of these slots is actually outlined a little bit more than the others. That's the current one for your main hand. You can move which one it is by pressing the numbers on the top of the keyboard or by scrolling with your mouse. There are nine hotbar slots and they correspond with the one through nine on the top of your keyboard. Since the lower numbers are closer to your left hand, you'll want to put the items that you use often in those lower slots. The scroll wheel will make it easier to select the higher numbered slots, and you'll probably find yourself using it more often. If you are holding an item in your hand, pressing Q will drop that item on the ground. This drops one item at a time, and if you want to throw many items away, it may be easier to just open your inventory, click, and drag the items out of your inventory to throw them all on the ground. The F key will equip any hotbar selected items into the offhand. This offhand is new to version 1.9, so if you are playing on an older version, you won't be able to do this. If your main hand is holding an item that doesn't have a right-click ability, or nothing at all, then you can use the right-click ability of your offhand. It is helpful then to keep tools in your main hand and blocks or a shield in your offhand. You should now be able to navigate and manipulate your inventory and break and place blocks in the world. Go ahead and practice this for a little bit, just breaking some dirt, moving it around in your inventory, throwing it on the ground, and picking it back up again. The next few keys may come in handy, but they don't get used too often. The T key will open the chat box. This allows you to send a message to all the players online in that world, and it also allows you to enter commands. But this doesn't get used too often in single player. Next is the tab key. Pressing this will show a list of the people connected to the server you are in. If you are in single player, it does nothing. Pressing the F1 key will remove your HUD, or heads-up display. This will make gameplay difficult, but allows you to see a little better. F2 takes a screenshot of the game, so you can easily share photos of your world. F3 opens the debug menu. A lot of information is displayed, and it gets confusing, but it does show you your coordinates, over here, X, Y, and Z, so you can easily navigate the world in case you get lost. It's smart to write down your house's location somewhere on a sticky note, and you can open this screen to work your way back home. F5 changes the camera view. The default camera is first person, but you can cycle through the back and the front third person cameras as well. F11 is the generic full screen shortcut, and it works in Minecraft as well. This is much easier than navigating to the options menu when you want to enter or exit full screen. You now know all of the keyboard controls in Minecraft. If you are new to keyboard gaming, a little practice just running around, moving things in your inventory, and breaking and placing blocks in the world will be very helpful. Join me in the next video where we will discuss basic game mechanics so you can understand the world around you. 